Hi guys, this is your next fun sheet. I did it a little different this time. It is in the form of guided notes, so you just have to fill in the blanks as we go along. This is on um, conducting an investigation to demonstrate how the cell membrane maintains homostasis through the process of passive transport. So we're going to talk about like four of those big words here in a second. Homeostasis and passive tra transport um, are just two of the ones we're going to talk about. So here we go. First, we need to define some terms and to talk about how things pass through the cell membrane. They pass through there in a process called diffusion. Diffusion is when particles move from areas of high concentration to areas of lower concentration. So, for example, if I made you all stand in the corner of my room by the window and we were all really close together and we could all touch each other, we were so close, um, like shoulder to shoulder close, and then I spread you out through the whole room, that would be diffusion. Where you were all standing shoulder to shoulder touching, we, that would be the high concentration. And then after I moved you all throughout the whole entire room, all the way to the door, all the way to the front and the back and the sides, that's me moving you, the high concentration, all the way across the room to the low concentration. The room was the low concentration. So that's an example of diffusion. The students, that's you guys, are the particles. And as... And when you were all touching, you were the high concentration. And as I moved you across the room, you went to a lower concentration. Another example is a plug-in. You know those little plug-ins that have a smell in them? So you plug it in, the little um, glass jar that's attached to it has an oil in it or perfume. And when you plug it in, the, the jar oil is the high concentration. And then when you plug it in, it diffuses it throughout the room. That's the low concentration. Um, we'll talk about some more of those examples in a minute. Another way to get things to pass through the cell membrane is through osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water. So it is exactly the same thing as diffusion, except it's water that is moving, not particles. And the water moves from areas of high concentration to areas of lower concentration. So just like the example where I told you you were standing in the corner and you were spreading out throughout the room, that was diffusion. If you were water molecules and you were moving through the cell membrane, then that would be osmosis. Um, and... We're going to do an example of this in lab, so it'll make even more sense, I hope, to see things passing through a cell membrane once you see it actually occur. Um, some things to talk about when a cell gets, the, gets particles that move back and forth. Sometimes it makes a cell hypertonic, and hypertonic cell is, is when the cell has less water inside the cell then and that causes the cell to shrink or the cell shrinks um, another thing that could happen is osmosis could occur and water could go into the cell and so a hypotonic cell is when the cell has more water inside the cell than outside and this causes the cell to swell. What happens is these things pass through, the water passes through um, the cell membrane. And if you notice on your fun sheet, I have, high, I have circled, not circled, I made this O larger or capitalized to help you differentiate between hyper and hypo. And I always say hypo is a hippo. And hippos are swell. So 
hypos are hippo and a hippo is swell. And that way you can think it's swell like it's big, it's swell because it's a hippo and it's big. All right, some more terms. Um, hypertonic and hypotonic occur when the cell is trying to balance out the water molecules. And once they finally do balance out the water molecules, um, it reaches a state of isotonic. Isotonic cell is when the cell is balanced. The cell has found a state of rest or equilibrium. And so hypertonic cells and hypotonic cells will occur until it reaches this point of isotonic. Um, which brings us to homeostasis. Homeostasis is a healthy state that is maintained by constant adjustments within the cell. So you will see in our lab, we are going to put a cell in a solution and the water is going to move until it finds or reaches a state of homeostasis or until it reaches becomes isotonic, which means it's equal. An example of homeostasis that you would know off like right now is our body temperature. Our body temperatures are 98.6 degrees. When you are hot, what does your body do to respond to that? It's making an adjustment by you sweating. When you sweat, the water on your skin cools your body down, so it lowers your body temperature. Reverse that. When you're cold, what does your body do to warm you up? It, um, you get, you shiver, and you get goosebumps, and so your hair stands up, and that hair standing up traps air close to your skin to keep your skin warm. So that is a way to also adjust our body temperature. And so 98.6 is our homostatic, our homostatic temperature. It wants us to be there, balanced. All right, selectively permeable, semi-permeable. We've talked briefly about this before, like when we were talking about our organelles. Um, what right here I want you to write what organelle I've said it several times already in the video but what organelle um, is semi permeable so this picks and chooses what can select be selected to go through that's what semi permeable and semi selectively permeable and semi permeable mean um, semi equals half. So if it, you're saying it's semi permeable, it's half permeable. Permeable. Oops. Permeable means um, passing through. So if it's semi permeable, half can pass through. If it's selectively permeable, it means things are being selected to pass through. So that's where those terms come from. So remember. I wrote in the highlighted spot now, but you need to also find a spot to write the organelle I'm talking about that's letting things pass through. A um, couple more terms. Active transport. When particles move requiring energy. Sometimes things need to go in and out of a cell and it requires energy to do it because it's not being able to go the, with the flow from, from um, high to low. But sometimes or most of the time, it occurs naturally, and passive transport occurs. Passive transport, when particles move without requiring energy, and that's what we're going to talk mostly about, osmosis and diffusion um, when they occur in our examples are going to occur passively through passive transport. No energy is required for that to occur. Um, a couple more terms that we need to rec be able to recognize. Sometimes things will talk about a solution being hyper or hypotonic instead of the cell. So we need to know what the words are that make up that. Solvent is the liquid that is able to dissolve other substances. So, this will make sense in a second when I finish defining these terms. The solute is the substance 
that is getting dissolved in a mixture or a solution. And a solution is the liquid where or mixture where a solute is dissolved in a sol solvent. It's a whole lot of S words. It's very confusing. So you have a substance or a liquid like water and you put sugar in it and you stir it up and the sugar disappears. One of those is the solute. One of them is the solvent. So which one's which? You write that in that spot on your paper. All right, just two more quick things. This poster, is this is Garfield. I don't know if you guys know Garfield or not, but he was around a lot when I was growing up. But this poster says, I'm learning by osmosis. Tell me, at the bottom of your paper, explain why this isn't osmosis. Tell me what's going on here in the poster and tell me why this can't be what he's claiming it to be, which is osmosis, but it's not. Tell me why. And finally, I want you to draw an example of diffusion or osmosis. I'm going to draw one right here for you. You cannot use this one as your example. You have to draw something else. So I'm going to do this example in class. So, oh, we don't want a highlighter. We want a marker, a pen. So I'm going to do this in class. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it for you. This is a beaker. In our beaker, we have some water. And I take a container of food coloring and I put a couple drops of that in. And as the food coloring gets in here at first, it just comes in a couple drops. So the food coloring, those red dots, are high concentration. I'm going to write high con because I'm out of room. The water that doesn't have the drop in it is the low concentration. But if we let that sit like that for 30 seconds, a minute, at the end, the drops will have spread out all through here and made the water red and so they'll have gone from the high concentration of the drop to the area of low concentration which was the whole beaker of water and then it had when it's all settled and the water's turned red it'll have reached a state of being an isotonic and be balanced out now you draw an example of anything you can think of that you've seen this phenomenon occur Bring your questions to class.